guys, Ariel over here at Finest. Today I'm bringing you along for one of the little chores that I do occasionally in my tiny kitchen. Every now and then somebody says that my kitchen looks uh, totally brand new. How have I kept it that way over the years? Um, it doesn't quite, if you look close up, I can see a little ding in my countertop right there where I dropped a kettle lid on it. There's a few marks like that, but generally it is in really good shape. And one of the things I do to maintain that since I have butcher block um, countertops is to oil them regularly. A little bit more often in the winter because of the dry heat coming from the wood stove than in the summer. Um, in fact, I probably don't do it through the summer at all. I'll do it several times at the start of winter, middle of winter, end of winter, and then it's fine all summer long. So there's different things you could use to um, preserve your wood, but one of the more popular and the one I like to use is just a basic mineral oil. This is edible. Um, if you want to uh, end up with diarrhea, it's used as a laxative, but it's not toxic, it's not poisonous. Um, if you drank it, you would just end up needing to sit on the toilet. Um, so it's safe for using on food surfaces. I also usually oil my cutting boards while I do this at the same time, just to maintain the wood on those. But I just clear everything off the counter. This is not a job that takes long at all. Um, getting low on my oil here. Actually, I need to buy a new bottle, but I just do a little drizzle like that. Use one of my old rags and simply rub it in to the surface. Now it's going to stay a little bit um, wet uh, and oily looking right on top for a little bit. So I try to do this at a time when I don't need to use my countertop for the next, you know, few hours at least so that I can um, let it just kind of sit there and soak in. Try to get all the edges here thoroughly. So I leave it a little extra um, oily looking, but you give it just a little bit of time and the wood will soak that up as well. And you'll probably see if you've got a countertop like this or even a cutting board, you get your more worn spots, uh, you know, kind of right in the center where I work or over by the edge of the sink where it tends to get um, water on it more frequently just because of the sink being there. So I just try to make sure I've covered the whole surface, get different angles and you can kind of see the little dry spots anywhere you missed. And then when I'm pretty sure I got it all, I just kind of make sure I smooth the surface back out so I don't have any extra big um, little puddle of oil anywhere. And that's all I do. That's good to go. I'll do my other countertop. And like I said, I like to get a little bit on my cutting boards, um, partially because of the very dry heat from having a wood stove. And in the winter, that can be hard on wood for sure. Make it split and crack. So these are just cheap little bamboo cutting boards, but I use them all the time and love them. And try to maintain them. I don't put a ton on them, but this is just one of my regular chores. Something to think about if you got um, natural wood, especially for a countertop or a cutting board. Like I said, it's not a chore I do real often, but I try to um, do it semi-regularly throughout the year. And if I notice at any other time that the um, wood on anything is getting dry looking or uh, hopefully not starting to crack, but definitely if it was starting to get to that point, I would do this. I'm just going to let all that dry there and move over here. Again, I've tried to move everything possible off of my surface. And I'm not doing this on any of the painted or stained wood, like around the window frame, just the, the raw natural wood that's the countertops. Like I said, over here by the edge of the sink, right along that line kind of, is where I get the, uh, the most wear on the wood because of the sink being right there. But this seems to work pretty well to maintain it. I've been, you know, into my fourth year of doing this now, and it does look like it's in pretty good condition. Smooth that out and then just you know this edge gets some um, water splashes for sure 
And then I do often go kind of back around behind the dishboard, but just with a real quick wipe because that area is usually only where I kind of store setting extra jars and that kind of thing. Um, and so it just, that wood doesn't get a lot of wear and tear. But I'll give it a quick wipe while I'm doing this. Just along around the whole. around the long and behind the whole sink there. So that's that. And as you can maybe see, I'll grab the camera here and see if I can show it a little better. Um, you can see one little spot that doesn't look quite even. And I'm actually going to drop these on the sink so that they can not interfere with this counter now that I'm done. Make sure I smooth out any little marks I made with them. But the, as I said, the countertop does still look just a little bit extra oily, but that will all soak in. So let me see if I can show you that. There in the reflection from the window, you can kind of see the uh, extra shine on the surface. That will, as this um, dries over the next couple hours, go to looking, you can kind of see it there again. And my hole, because my new stove is on the way, um, that will, the light doesn't show up real well there, um, that will go to looking more matte again as the rest of that oil soaks up. So I just do that so I get a good, um, good amount soaked into the wood while I'm doing it. Hope that's a helpful tip for you guys. Thanks for watching, folks. If you're interested in more info on my off-grid tiny house life, check out some of my other videos here. And if you like what you're seeing, click the little picture of my house to subscribe and then hit the little bell so YouTube actually notifies you every time there's a new video available. See y'all next time!